without sugar. Yeah. Lacking the sweetness of life is one of the causes of pancreatic cancer. Mm. You know, not enjoying the sweetness of life. It's emo emotionally a cause of pancreatic cancer or depression for that matter. Um, the question is asked, we really like sugar. What's wrong with sugar? Well, the problem is the types of sugars we're getting now. We used to eat, as humans, you know, we were gatherers. We would gather fruit and berries and, and nuts and eat these things very slowly throughout the day. You know, we'd be out there gathering them and eating them and, and then taking some home to the, the tribe that was doing the other mundane work. And so we were getting small amounts of fructose and sucrose and different sugars. Now, when you get small amounts, it raises the blood sugar a little bit, but we were more active. We were out there walking and gathering, you know, whereas now we kind of sit down at our computer and fiddle around and we're not moving our body. So they found the pancreas of people prior to our generations the pancreas was actually a third smaller than it is today. They're doing autopsies today and they're showing the pancreas is three times the size of pancreases of people in the 1920s really? and 1910. And the reason why we're getting, we, we perfected making sugar and putting it into our food. So instead of getting small amounts of sugar throughout the day, we get boluses of sugar throughout the day, you know, and those big boluses have made our brain go, oh, we need more insulin. Boom, we send the signal to the pancreas, we need more insulin, and boom, the pancreas has to produce more insulin. So, when you're eating sugars in small amounts, but you're very active, it burns them all up. Burns them up and makes it so you don't have diabetes. Currently, in our generation, we're getting children getting type 2 diabetes. This was unheard of when I went to medical school. Little kids, they got type 1 diabetes, which is where you get a fluke into your liver and it, or your pancreas and it eats all the pancreatic cells that produce the insulin, the beta cells, and you get cancer. But now we're getting kids that are getting overweight, too much sugars, and they're getting type 2 diabetes because they're becoming insulin resistant because of all the sugars they're eating all the time and it's created a whole generation of chronic fungal, fungated kids. The, the fungus actually causes the insulin resistance. As I've gotten fungus out of people's bodies, the insulin resistance goes away. And they are no longer type two diabetics, they're, they're in good shape. Well, their mothers are already there. Excuse me? Their mothers are already there when they have the baby. Yes. A lot of the mothers, oh, we were watching a show on TV two nights ago that had these extremely obese mothers and every one of their kids would get really huge because of all the higher sugars. And so they'd end up having C-sections and all kinds of high blood pressure problems, diabetic problems, and during pregnancy, and it, it'd create a baby who was literally used to high, high sugar. Mm -hmm. And so the second that baby come out, they'd be hypoglycemic, so they'd have to give them an IV and give them sugar to keep them, keep them going. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just propagates the whole problem. Well, so, go ahead. I was gonna say, isn't the, the increase of sugar in the diet today m to make food taste better because the soil of which the foods are grown in is so poor? Yes, exactly. I think it goes back to the soil. Yes, it partially does. Uh, we're sterilizing our soils. There's no bacteria. The bacteria actually help the plants, just like they help us. But in the sprays kill all the bacteria. The herbicides and yeah. pesticides are killing the good bacteria. So we're sterilizing the soil, making it harder for the plant to gather nutrients and actually create nutrients. The bacteria, just like in our bodies, that help break down the food, and create B vitamins for us. They, they do all kinds of stuff. They create enzymes for us. And when we kill them off, either by eating too much sugar and creating fungus in there that pushes the bacteria out, or 
we're eating food that doesn't have as much nutrients, uh, we get nutrient deficient. And our soil, we grow so much in it, and then we put pesticides and herbicides on it, and it makes the environment for the vegetables and the fruits not as pristine to have nutrients. Mm -hmm. Or taste. Or, or taste, taste. Mm -hmm. exactly. Like today, I made some carrot juice, and the carrots were tasteless. I was like, gee, these are really tasty. They didn't even have sugar in them even. You know, they didn't even have the, the, the fructose for the sugar. And I was quite surprised, actually. I thought they would, you know, they were organic, but they, they were really tasteless. And I think they came out of soil that had been sterilized. And uh, it's very interesting. We watched a movie about water. It was called Flow for Love of Water. And it showed how uh, eight out of ten horticulturists that are graduating from our universities here in the United States, they are convinced you have to kill the bacteria in the soil. So a sterile soil is better. And it's ridiculous because they have totally removed the thoughts from them because the ones teaching them all this is the pharmaceutical and the chemical industry, which creates all these herbicides, bactericides, uh, and they're teaching them to use these things in the soil to create more food. Well, they're creating more food, but it's, it's full of carbohydrate and it has no nutrition in it. And they think they're gonna feed the world with this stuff. And actually, it's gonna create more diseases because of, of all the carbohydrate within this food rather than the nutrition that it needs. And foods, the reason they, they taste good is the nutritional value. If it really, if you get an organic apple, for instance, that hasn't had that glaze put on it, hasn't sat in the store for six months, uh, it's amazing how good they taste. The, the, the ones that have had that the glaze put on them, if you eat them, they, they just don't taste good. But I tell you, I could sit and eat organic apples all day, and they're good and good for you. And the sugar in them is actually very slow to break down. There was a, another article about a banana diet that came out, and it's been shown that bananas actually, they do have calories in, they do have sugars in, but they slowly break down so that it keeps you fuller all day. Mm -hmm. And they actually had a banana diet to help you lose weight, <laughs> which is very interesting. Bananas also have antifungals in them. Um, but as they ripen, you'll see, you know, when they get dark and they get the black spots, that's the fungus getting in. And all good food will, will deteriorate with time. And that's a good thing. Because if it didn't, you know, our wor world would be filled with trash and with old food that was sitting there. So fungus does serve a purpose. It breaks down the old food. Now, some of the newer foods they've created, the, the genetically modified foods, they won't get rust, they won't get mold, which are both fungus, <laughs> because they, they've actually incorporated antifungal genes within that. And how did they do that? They put bacteria and virus that incorporated a, a, a fungicidal gene to keep that away. But the other interesting thing is, we don't get as much nutrition from it either. So. Not only does the fungus not like it, but our system doesn't like it as well. Well, there's a the lack of life in it. Yes, it's exactly. Life. It's been genetically modified to uh, keep things from eating it. it. It's interesting. The rodents won't even eat it. The the mice and the the rats and things. They they the insects won't even get into it because it just doesn't have any nutrition for them. Well, it's 